All right, Excitement Town, USA. So this is video number two for the Drop Zone Commander Risk Assessment Series. I hope you can hear me all right. This video is going to be about movement, so I thought we could do a little ride along here for a second. Take a trip with me. It's quite chilly in this uh, evening northwest fall air, so I gotta warm up for a second. And I do apologize for having kind of a bit of a pause between these. If you're if you're watching these and you're kind of expecting regular installments, I do apologize. Uh, I got engaged a few weeks ago, so we've been really preoccupied with preparing for uh, the wedding and and kind of establishing plans and, and things so it's been a little bit of a, of a break I'm trying to still put these out fairly regularly but I do apologize for the the pause here so what are we doing here sitting in my truck well I figured since we're talking about movement we might as well do some moving now the interesting thing about drop zone commander I'm gonna try to put you here so I'm being safe don't worry <laughs> both hands on the wheel, I'm just kind of sitting you on the dash. Um, the interesting thing about Drop Zone Commander and their movement phase is that it's not necessarily a strict movement phase, so to speak. Unlike a lot of systems where you move and that's kind of it and then you move on to a different phase, Drop Zone Commander kind of has a tendency to intertwine a lot of their, a lot of their different actions Sorry about that. Got a phone call. All right, so where were we? Talking about the subtleties of the drop zone command commander movement phase. Uh, I do apologize for the, the dark, by the way. I realize you probably can't see much. I'm gonna be putting some paint diagrams up anyway, so um, yeah, you won't have to deal with that very much. So leading into that, there are two things that I wanted to cover for movement. The first one, uh, and po possibly the the most common, if not most important thing that you'll be trying to use these these different subtleties and, and intricacies of the movement system. Intricacies I use in a broad way. It's not necessarily a complicated process, um, but it is an important process. And again, discussing how sometimes. Uh, as war gamers, we're preconditioned to kind of think in a certain way from different games. We might be considering movement being a certain kind of two-dimensional, easy aspect of the game. You move, you you have your your movement, your base movement statistic. You move that, and then and then you kind of call it a day from there. So the first thing I want to discuss is disembarking and what you can do or disembarking and embarking and what you can do to kind of maximize your movement and maximize your ability to stay out of harm's way. Again, this is a risk assessment series, so really what we want to focus on is what exactly we can do to mitigate risks and, and do things that, that have uh, a low risk potential as far as damaging units or or putting yourself in a position where you could lose something when you aren't prepared or, you, or you're not uh, able to handle the repercussions. So, for for example, losing a unit of battle tanks early on in the game, um, depending on what you're trading off for them, uh, that in a lot of cases isn't going to be worth whatever you were trying to accomplish because that's a, a significant a significant portion of your force. So in dealing with risk assessment and embarking and disembarking, and this again, this is uh, focused mainly for the small battle group, the small starter sets, um, small battle groups, and this should be able to transcend really any faction you're dealing with. So I'm gonna put up a paint diagram here regarding disembarking. 
a unit. This example here is, is disembarking a unit um, while trying to maximize your movement to get out of, uh, out of the threat zone of the, the enemy tank squadron you see here. I'm going to be using UCM as the main example. Uh, like I said before, there's going to be two things we'll be discussing. The first one will be this embarking and disembarking concept. The second one will be shooting, and for both examples, I'm going to be using UCM for a couple of reasons. The first reason I'll be using UCM is because that's the, the main faction that I play. That's the primary faction that I use. And secondly, they're very good as far as being a base uh, way to look at things. So kind of like, a, if I might be so bold as to say a, a Marine, an MEQ, a, a Marine equivalent, like the Space Marines, basically. They're kind of the baseline. Um, and, on, and on top of that, they are one of the slower factions, if not the slowest faction. PHR is slower, but they have heavier armor, and so they, they sometimes have uh, a lot of different options at their disposal as far as where they move and, and how they move. But UCM is, is one of the slower factions, and so in using them as an example for movement, you'll be able to see that even with limited quote-unquote movement, you can still, in a lot of ways, maximize your abilities and and outmaneuver your, your enemy positions. So looking at this diagram here, we're gonna look at what you can do for embarking or disembarking. In this scenario, disembarking. So you have this enemy unit up here snuggled in between these two buildings. Now, what are your options as far as getting to that piece of intel in the north building there and at the same time staying out of harm's way understanding that the the opponent is yet to activate that that unit so th that activation has still not happened which means that tank unit can still move um, as soon as this uh, this battle group of yours the friendly battle group has gone we can theoretically assume that the next activation will be the, the enemy tank unit here. So looking at this diagram, and uh, if you want, I know I have a lot of text on it, so if you would like, uh, you can pause the video to read and kind of take in exactly what's what's happening, because it's I understand it's hard to read and then listen to me ramble and yap on. So. What we're looking at here is, is we have a challenge before us. We need to get to this building with the intel in it before the opponent does. However, there's an, an enemy tank squadron sitting between the two buildings, and so we want to make sure that not only do we not uh, expose ourselves, that's the word I was looking for, not only do we not expose ourselves, but we also use enough of our movement to be able to stay out of the way of the enemy threat range on the next turn. So I know I don't have specific measurements in place, but let's assume that this building here, at the, the north building with the intel in it, is, is a fairly large building. This isn't going to be exact, but I think it'll get the point across. Assuming that the enemy is not UCM, let's just say uh, for the purposes of using a starter box example, let's just assume that this enemy tank unit is the Scourge. So the Scourge have a 9-inch movement, uh, a 9-inch movement where they can move 9 and then be able to fire as well uh, at, at this unit. So let's, let's assume that the side of the building here is 7 inches or so. Um, because it is a cityscape, we're assuming that the ground uh, is going to be uh, excellent ground, so concrete, road, sidewalks, things like that, which gives tracked and treaded vehicles uh, two, extra, two extra inches of movement, which will be important. And then we're going to assume that the, uh, the unit that we have is going to be obviously following all of their lowest common denominator rules as far as movement goes. So uh, everything is going to be moving within their minimum or maximum move dif distance for performing a disembark embark. All right, so step one, we activate the battle group. Currently in the first frame here, the battle group is all cohesive still. It's uh, It consists of two bare APCs in a Condor medium dropship. 
and then we're assuming that the Condor or the bear APCs have their full complement of legionnaires inside. This is a, a the basic troop uh, setup for the starter set. So we've got our battle group here. Now, in order to move to that building, but still be able to disembark our bears, we're gonna have a maximum move from the condor, condor of nine inches, which is half of the condor's move of 18. So we move our nine. And again, keep in mind that in a lot of games, you know, you have your 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 one move, and then that's basically it for the move, the the unit. Here, we want to always remember that there are uh, at least three in this scenario. There's actually up to a maximum of four, but there's at least three steps to this particular move, and not just one. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to move our nine inches up. Then the second thing we're going to do. Uh, in the second frame here is disembark. We want to disembark our bears so we can get to that building. We disembark and the, an important thing to consider here is that disembarking you have a three inch buffer from the vehicle. Everything is measured center to center of the unit. So three inches is, is a fairly a fairly generous buffer of space that we can use. So we disembark three inches and again I do apologize nothing is is to scale or perfect in this diagram it's just kind of to get an idea across but we're assuming that that this little chunk of, of space here is three inches in the second frame then from there you have your units half move skill because your unit after disembarking can then proceed to move half of its movement as well. And this is an important thing and in my first games uh, it's something that we forgot quite a bit to do and again this is I believe has something to do strongly with that psychological precondition of of thinking that your movement is basically just this one lump sum and then and then you're done. So what we do is we then take our bears who are disembarked and then let's move them their half. Now the, the important thing to note for the bear in particular or UCM vehicles, UCM and PHR are going to utilize this special rule most, most of the time. But it is something, again, important to consider. Um, and for those two factions, extremely important to consider that on excellent ground, you actually have a bonus move you have two extra inches so our full movement here is going to be that the bears move is is six inches a whopping six inches and then we're going to add on two to that to make it eight but again remember because we disembarked we are at half move and so let's cut that down to four inches which is still fairly significant so we're moving four inches and again, uh, we're going behind the building here to get out of line of sight. And again, things aren't perfect, but let's uh, consider that the unit, the enemy unit, is kind of in the middle of the building on the, the, the south side. So what we're seeing here is, even with Scourge and their, their really good movement of, of nine inches and then being able to fire, Let's assume that because of the size of the building, they have to move at least a minimum of two inches to get around the corner here, and then seven inches, assuming that we have a three inch buffer again, and then four inches to get around the side of the building. That's at least seven, not to mention if the, the condor here has uh, gone above the line of the building at all that would that would add extra room so we're looking here at a very very minimum of nine inches of of movement that you've been able to get on on the scourge battle tank squadron here and what is what this is going to do is it's going to be able to put you into a position where you're going to be able to get into the building and I, and I put a side note here, uh, it's an important thing to know that uh, even after everything that we've done so far, we still have one disembark that we can do. So we could actually put our guys into the building at this point and occupy that building all in one move, which is fairly significant if you consider that this was done in, uh, in one single movement phase for one battle. But 
what we want to consider is that if we do put ourselves in that position, then we've spent all that effort to get out of the threat zone of these Scourge tanks just to basically present them another target because then at this point that they can turn around and fire at the building and uh, do damage to your to your legionnaires here. One thing to note, uh, one thing important to note is that with this movement, um, obviously the the battleground is going to be a bigger picture. So this is just kind of a microcosm of the field. But one important thing to note. All right, I'm back again. I had to. I'm at the destination now, so I had to turn the the pickup off. All right, so. One important thing to consider is, in knowing all of this, this is a fairly impressive uh, way to accomplish getting into this building, and, and this is uh, basically a fairly simple and elementary aspect of the game, disembarking units, using your, utilizing your movement to maximum effect. And even with a slower faction, look at what we were able to accomplish in this scenario. This can be the difference between losing that unit next turn or keeping it, which, um, as, as mentioned in the CQB video, your legionnaires in this particular example, um, the, your troops are the most important part of your, your force. So in this example, losing your legionnaires might have, uh, assuming that this was the first or second activation of the game, or this was at least fairly early on, um, this could have lost you the game right off the bat because you didn't use movement to get out of the threat range or you didn't um, go far enough basically to to outmaneuver your opponent in this scenario but that's one thing that I, that I want to also focus on is that even though cerebrally from a intellectual standpoint from reading the rules you might understand the rule but in seeing it in play uh, at least for me, this is kind of me speaking from personal experience and, and how I learn things. This didn't really catch on until after we started playing. And again, we used movement, we, we knew the rules. Um, but in a rule, whenever there's something, you know, a subtle word like and or uh, in this situation, it can really change the, the nature of the rule. And sometimes we tend to, as, as war gamers, overlook that. So that's something uh, that uh, something else I, I really want to to focus on is paying attention to those ands and ors in a rule because in this situation, um, just having that and there that that allowed you to move all that extra space and get out of out of harm's way. All right, so enough with the rambling here. Let's move on to the second scenario, the second thing I want to focus on for movement. Now this is gonna this is gonna center mostly on on shooting or more aptly what your options are when you have a an enemy kind of looking down their sights at you and you need to get you need to break line of sight. This is another one of those and or situations because of the fact that uh, it was almost a side note how it's put in the rules, but you can decide in drop zone commander whether to shoot or move first and and in this uh paint image that you're looking at here this is a an incredibly important distinction to make in this situation because you're sitting here out in the open it doesn't really matter why or how you got there but for some reason your your tank squadron is kind of sitting exposed and the scourge enemy is looking at you or or whatever enemy it doesn't really matter in this one but let's let's assume that they're scourged just for the the purposes of of playing to the the concept of the starter box so here we are looking at this situation where you are about to be shot but luckily it's your turn still so what are your options? Well, looking at the diagram, obviously, this is a simple, this is a simple thing to understand is in this situation, you activate your battle tanks and you are then able to decide, hey, I'm going to get out of cover. I'm going to get out of uh, line of sight of this unit that I'm about to be shot at. But first, why don't we take a pot shot? 
there's no harm done and uh, it, it will give us a uh, a reason to use our, our weapons and I know there's a lot of uh, philosophy out there I'm not a, a math hammer type of person I'm not a, a math guy that's that tends to be my my wargaming buddy that kind of looks at the the math behind everything um, but I know a lot of people who focus on the numbers a lot. They say every time you're not shooting, every time you're not using your unit's ability, that's wasted points. That's throwing their points down the toilet, so to speak, because you are not using it for a turn. So in, in, uh, in respect to that concept, what we want to do here is utilize our weapons and also get ourselves out of harm's way. So, uh, again, a, another a very simple concept, uh, something very easy to, to understand and remember, yet from a cerebral point of view, knowing the rule may not necessarily translate to uh, being able to, to utilize it to the maximum effect. And again, this is a, a throwback to my original concept uh, when I started the series in, in the CQB video I mentioned this is focused on really getting people who are just starting the game because the starter box came out recently people who are just starting the game kind of a, a heads up and a, in a, a a good grasp on the subtleties of the rules before they you know before they go through what I did which was playing a few games and, and kind of acquiring this knowledge through experience and realizing oh I messed up and my unit is exposed or I didn't move far enough or or whatever so again a simple a simple scenario you want to basically shoot the unit and then say hey let's let's bug out and let's get behind this building um, and then one final note I want to make is uh, in that final frame there you can see the spe the sign note when you're dealing with um, a skimmer vehicle movement is also important because it, it grants you that that uh, accuracy bonus and um, that's something that in my experience uh, as far as I know every skimmer in the game has the ability to to get that bonus while still firing their gun so really there should never be a moment in time where you're not utilizing that ability and that's something also that's very important to consider because if you're looking at uh, being shot at for example by a UCM tank in your scourge uh, a UCM tank has a 2 plus accuracy, so if you don't move far enough, you're getting hit on a 2, and your armor's not great, so you're likely going to be losing that tank. However, if you move your your minimum of 6 inches to get that skimmer bonus, then they're only hitting you on a 4, which makes it a 50% chance that you'll survive it, which is, which is a, a big deal, especially over the course of multiple turns, multiple activations. All right, so in closing, this movement video is really in the same in the same vein as the CQB video, really trying to accomplish one goal, and that is to to get new users, new new players to look at the game not only from a an intellectual I know the rules perspective, but also the subtleties of those rules and and really what they mean when you apply them to an actual game. The two main concepts of this video being, one, when you disembark, and it also applies to embarking, obviously, um, you have really three tiers, if not four tiers, of movement that you can you can accomplish. Even the slower factions can move quite a bit, as you saw from that first diagram, when you are moving your drop zone or your drop your dropship speed, then disembarking your full disembark move and then moving your unit, your, your half movement, even with a slower faction, that's, that's quite a bit of inches that you can acquire. And then of course the second one is understanding that shooting and movement can happen in, in either way. And, uh, and really that's, that's an important distinction, albeit simple, because that will allow you to be able to use your guns to a, a better effect while still uh, re uh, re removing the the exposed aspect of your unit if you're sitting out in the open. All right, so that is uh, part two. Uh, part three will focus on shooting, and hopefully that will be up 
here in the next week or so.